Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me doing week four of the Lico Premium Weekly Challenge. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's farm. 1063, number of valid subways. We haven't solved this one yet. Yay! I don't know. I'm maybe not that excited, but uh, okay. So given an integer array nums, return the number of non empty subways with the leftmost element of the subway not larger than other elements in the subway. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that the left element is going to be the smallest, but after that, it's fine. So, okay, so I mean, this is a, should be pretty okay. It's just really, um, more, really specific. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I think harder versions of this problem have been asked already uh, on contests, maybe not recently, but, but yeah, but the idea is, I mean, they, this is a good starter problem to those kind of problems because it kind of um, pushes you to kind of at least think about it one specific way, which is that you have to think about the leftmost element. Or maybe another way to think about it is just one element at a time. Um, here we can, I mean, you know, this is a sub valid subarray, so there are really only two directions you can go. Uh, if you don't want to do n square, and I, didn't, I forgot to look at the constraints, but I assume that because it's hard, you cannot do n square, right? And really, so after that, there are only two directions to go which is from left to right or right to left. Um, and in this case, it makes more sense to go right to left um, because then now we can build off, um, build off something. Or, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it allows me to at least build off things that we're looking at, right? Meaning because the leftmost, and then you, when you look at an element and it is the leftmost element, obviously looking at the right. So assuming that we built some kind of thing on the right, then we can now, um, yeah, yeah, now take advantage of that by doing something incremental, which allow us to do it in better than n square, right? Okay, so let's think about it real quick. I mean, let's, so I mean, the idea here is that for every element, um, it wants to be the smallest element, right? And so what does that mean? That means that in another way, in another way to say it is that you want to find the element to the right, which is um, smaller than this, right? Is it distinct? Mm, nope. Yeah, so uh, in this case then, has to be an element that is strictly smaller than this current element. And of course, we have a, a data structure to do that if you kind of have practice. I'm always really bad at memorizing, though. It's one of those, like, uh, what is it called? Uh, um, I don't know, max Q, or uh, uh, what was it called? Monotonically, uh, mon oh, yeah, mono Q, right? Mono Q or mono stack, one of those. I never remember those things. So I always have to do it from scratch, which is, eh, but at least, like, I know uh, I'm able to get it, maybe eventually, right? And here, um, the other thing that I uh, haven't really brought up yet is that when you see the next number that's smaller, then you know the length or the number of subarrays because subarrays can take a risk. That means that you know you just choose, you just count the number of freedom, uh, uh, the number of what's it called, choice of freedom or degree of freedom that we can, right? Uh, for example, in this four, you can you cannot go past two, so you have zero degree of freedom, so you only have one choice. Uh, in this two, well, you have all all the freedom, so you can go one just two. You could go to the five. You could do the three. Dot dot dot. Right. So you basically see how far you can go. Um, okay. So basically, now let, let's build something out, right? So um, the way that I think about this is that, and it's probably mono stack just from. To be honest, me solving enough of these, but maybe I'm wrong. But the invariant here we're trying to do is that as we kind of put this in in some sort of data structure, and let's say we have this data structure, um, we want to get two things, right? One is uh, remove possible, um, remove choices that are not possible, right? What does that mean? That means that let's say um, no, let's say I'm at some number x, right? Doesn't really matter what it is. But let's say we have some uh, previously seen sequence. Uh, what would be a good one? Um, uh, let's say five and then four, right? Oh, no, 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 the other way around, four and five, right? 
uh, when we when we process the four, what does that mean? Uh, or we, we want to process, or we want to set up the processing for four so that future things can know that four is the the um, the smallest number, right? Well, not the smallest number, but a number that is smaller than x. Yeah. So so that in theory, going so you're basically pre-processing uh, it in a way such that in the future you can look back and see, you know, uh, like for example, here my my question for x is going to be like, hey. What is the closest number smaller than x, right? And the the thing that I want to uh, stress on these kind of things is that you want to eliminate answers so that uh, you don't kind of do work that is impossible. And what do I mean by that? So what I mean by that is that if a number, let's say, uh, I mean we can do it exhaustively. Maybe I'll start that first, uh, exhaustively, and just make a little bit more space. Uh, Let's do this exhaustively to kind of begin with, right? Let's say the number is 3. What is the next number that's smaller than 3? Well, it doesn't exist, right? Uh, okay, fine. Easy to do, you know? Uh, so then now we just kind of do, you know, whatever. But let's say the answer is 6, right? What's the next smallest number? Obviously, it's 4, right? Also, obviously, to see. But let's say the number is 10, right? What does that mean? What's the next smallest number? Well, the answer is 4. Well, wh why do I count? And there are obviously only 3 distinct uh, three distinct possibilities not including uh you know numbers that are the same or whatever but you know we'll just hand wave that for now you can kind of go through it but the, the thing i want to point out is that we what 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 happens to the four and the seven right well seven is never the answer and why is it never the answer because any number that's bigger than four that we see in the future i know we're going from right to left so future is a little bit awkward but any numbers that's bigger than four we see in the future will have four as this answer and it will never have seven at the answer right for obvious reasons or you know for you know reasons that you can kind of think through a little bit because any number that's bigger than four uh it doesn't matter that's all you need to know that it stops there right it doesn't it's a supper way it doesn't extend any further back so you never need to look for at seven so that's basically the idea um and the reason uh this is so powerful is that um, because this seven, you only push it in once, and once you remove it, you can remove it only once as well. So we're only going to do linear time, and that's basically where the amortization comes from. So that that's basically the core idea. And what I said to you right now is basically how I kind of prove things, right? Uh, I don't really actually like memorize mono Q. Like uh, this is mono stack, sorry. I don't memorize mono stack and or anything like this. Not specifically. It's all about the invariance, about the loops and stuff like this. And the other, the other question maybe why is it called mono stack? Well, it turns out because uh, for every number you want to remove all the numbers after it that are bigger than it. So then, as a result of that, a property of the stack is that it's going to be monotonically decreasing. Hence, mono stack right um but that's really as i always say for these kind of problems this is uh an emergent property and not um not something to kind of be like memorize even i like before kind of going through it i, I actually have no idea whether it was going to be monotonically increasing or decreasing because i just i don't know like maybe someone could memorize it or they do it enough times or whatever but for me like uh, I just think about what is the question and then how to solve it, right? And then kind of everything kind of falls apart or falls together, um, and it doesn't really matter uh, the emergent part. Uh, uh, that it is mono. It doesn't really matter that it's monotonic or that it is decreasing in this particular case. Uh, yeah, and then now that we have the idea, we can kind of go straight to it, right? So yeah, for um, and I'm a little bit lazy, so I'm just gonna. Uh, reverse this. Uh, you don't have to do it this way, of course. Uh, but we, it just allows me to go from left to right, uh, and in, and it has a nice property that you'll see in a second as well. Um, but you know, but keeping in mind that this is, of course, obviously linear time. I also count that as linear space because technically, you would probably make a make a copy before reversing it because that's just bad practice to. Uh, uh, make it not item uh or like you know, using memory that they take care of. But uh, but this is just for uh, as a trick for the indexing. So you actually don't even need this. I'm just lazy. Um, and you know, of course, let's just use a variable to keep track of the total, right? Okay. 
Okay, you, you have to write something more than that, Larry. <laughs> and then we have a stack. And then now, uh, yeah, while well, length of stack is greater than zero, and there's other stuff, but we'll just skip it for now for because the first item it doesn't matter. Um, and then we append i and x, right? And then what, what hap what, what do we pop here? We pop if if the current number is smaller than the previous number, we want to pop because this will always be the answer and not the next one, right? Okay, right? Uh, I always get this wrong. I don't know why I always type like this, but I always get it wrong. Maybe I think I'm out of mind. Okay. Uh, so while well, this number is bigger than... Um, I have to think about the even uh, the the eco case. That's why I'm, I'm hesitating a little bit. But uh, but I think for, for now this is fine. But let's see what happens when you have a eco case. Um, no, you just replace it, I guess. Hmm. It is very awkward though. So yeah, so if if it's eco, uh, then we also want to pop because that means that. We are able to go past this. I think that's the correct interpretation. Uh, and then we just return total. But of course, we have to do the math first. Um, basically, now it is stopping at the last element, right? And actually, I kind of messed up here. Or there are a couple of ways to, to handle this case. Um, I think the thing is that stack could be zero, or the length of stack could be zero. But you can actually handle this slightly better. And what I mean by that is just have a a, um, a sentinel and a thing, which is like negative one, and then uh, negative infinity. Say right, negative infinity, because then this would never be true for the last element. So uh, so yeah. And then now we before putting it on, we can basically look at the difference in the indexes. So if this is zero and this is one, that means that this has technically uh, zero degree of freedom, but one subarray, right? So we can do something like um, I minus uh, the last elements, uh, zero. Because the top of the stack is going to be, uh, the top of the stack is, uh, what, what was I gonna say? The top of the stack is the next, element that is smaller than this one right so yeah uh all right so this looks gucci for these three cases are there really more cases i don't know i guess like one three four five i mean there's just like more variation of this so i don't even know if uh i don't know something like that say right uh i don't know if there's like an answer limitation but i guess supper ways can only be n square so uh, or and choose two if you want to be more precise. It looks good. Let's give it a submit. Did I not click? Let's give it a submit. And yeah, uh, what we have here? What do we have here? This is linear time, linear space. Um, uh, did I say I could fit in constant state? I totally lied. I forgot about the stack somehow. But yeah, because of the stack, this is going to be linear space. No way around it. I think one of the inputs would be linear anyway. Uh, yeah, and linear time. Obvious, also obvious. Uh, this part is linear. The while loop is a little bit awkward to look, but you can think about it as each item gets only pushed and pop once off the of the stack. Uh, so that's going to be linear time, and this only looks at like n, right? So yeah, um, that's pretty much it. This is a hopefully a a good intro to mono stack or whatever. Uh, like I said, I don't like thinking about these things with respect to mono stacks for that reason or mono queue or whatever because you can. I think the point is just about, um, you know, figure out uh, which one you need. And you can figure out which one you need by figuring out what question you need uh, to ask a data structure, right? And that's basically it. Uh, cool. That's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Have a great week and, well, week and weekend. Stay good, stay healthy to get mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.